Good evening. So good to have you guys here with us this afternoon. Uh, I am Draper Rogers, pastor of Young Families here at GFBC, and I am just so excited to be able to share the word with you tonight. Hey, on the table with me today is a, is a product. I don't know if you know about this product, but this is WD-40. You know, when I see this can, it takes me back to my childhood. Uh, see, one of the things that I used to do growing up is I would follow my dad around and I would help my dad in any project that he had. And i never forget, we would be working on a car or we'd be doing something and he would uh, encounter a boat that was stubborn, maybe had some rust on it or would just tighten really tight. And I could hear it like he said it this morning. He would say, buddy, and that was what he referred to me as, go get me the WD-40. And I would go and find a can of the WD-40. We always had it around. And I would give it to dad and he would spray it on that boat in a uh, couple of seconds or so and then he would be able to get it off and we would continue on with the job. You know, recently I was doing some research around WD-40. And I don't know if you know this, but WD-40 is actually the initials. It actually stands for something. It stands for Water Displacement 40th Formula. See, this formula that's in this can has over 50 different uses. The scientists, when they were creating it, they had to keep going till they found the right mix, the right formula, if you will. And it was the 40th formula. That got me to thinking, how many of us give up on God before we get an answer, before God shows us what to do? You know, think about it. If the scientists would have given up after try number five or number 10 or number 20 or better yet, 39, we wouldn't have this product here today. See, one of the things I've come convinced of is that we give up too easy. Are we really and truly desperate for a move of God? Because if we're desperate for a move of God, we would persist, we would continue. I got a statement that I want to wrap everything around today. Desperation leads to transformation. Desperation leads to transformation. Tonight, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Matthew chapter 15. And I just want to walk through a text of scripture, make a couple of comments, and then we'll be done. Matthew 15, uh, in my Bible, it is titled, uh, verse 21, is titled, A Gentile's Mother's Faith. And as we walk through this, again, I'll make a couple of comments and we'll close out. But uh, out of the Christian Standard Bible, it says, When Jesus left there, he withdrew to an area of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from the region came and kept crying out, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely tormented by a demon. Now, if I pause right there, a Canaanite, this is a polytheistic religion. They believed in multiple gods. So, so she is crying out to the one true God, and, and she cries out to him, and here's what Jesus, Jesus said. Because we would think that Jesus would answer. Jesus did not say a word to her. Think about that for a minute. Do you like to cry out to someone, or better yet, do you even like to talk to someone and they ignore you? How would you feel if you're talking to someone and they just flat out ignored you? Jesus ignored her. Jesus did not say a word. His disciples approached him and urged him, send her away because she is crying out after us. See, the disciples are ready to just say, hey, Jesus, send this lady away. We're tired of her. But we go on down. We continue on reading. Verse 24, he replied, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him and said, Lord, help me. Let's pause right there. So first off, she cries out to him, and he ignores her. Then he responds, and she comes, and, and she, she, she kneels down. She, she, she's begging him, Lord, help me. Verse 26, he answered her. It isn't right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. It's kind of an odd statement. Verse 27, yes, Lord, she said, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus replied to her, woman, your faith is great. 
let it be done for you as you want. And from that moment, her daughter was healed. See, desperation leads to transformation. This lady was desperate. She was desperate for, for a move from God. She was desperate for, for a move of God. Are you desperate? Are you desperate for God to move in your life? Are you desperate for God to move in the life of some of those around you, in your family, in your kids? See, our, our key here today is desperation leads to transformation. See, when we're desperate, we really go hard after God. Think about it, think about it. Just recently, I watched the Game 7 of the Boston Celtics and the Philadelphia 76ers, NBA basketball, you know, round ball. I watched that game and I watched the Celtics. Man, they were desperate. They were desperate and they played their hearts out and they got the win. They did not give up. So the question that I want to give you today is are you desperate? Are you desperate for a move of God? Because if you're desperate, then we need to follow the example of God's word that's given to us in God's word. We need to lean in to God. We need to, to go to him in prayer and cry out to him. So I pray that you will not give up because desperation leads to transformation. So as we prepare our hearts, prepare our minds for awakening, I pray that we would be desperate, that we would be falling on our face before God, crying out to him, asking him to move in our lives and in the lives of those around us. Amen? Let me close this in prayer. Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for this day. Thank you for all that you've done. And Lord, I pray that we would be desperate for you, that we would seek you with all that we have for as long as we have. Lord, thank you for your love, for your mercy, and for your grace. We love you, Father. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen.